We already saw that it is very important to specify the correct amount of memory and maximum runtime for your job. With memory, if you don't ask for enough and your job uses more memory, then it will get killed. On the other hand, if you ask for too much, then you're asking effectively for a larger fraction of the cluster, more resources, so it'll take longer to schedule your job. And then if you ask for more memory than is available on the cluster, then your job will never run at all. And it's interesting with Slim that the schedule actually will not stop you from submitting a job or even warn you. Remember that if you don't specify memory at all, then you'll get some default, which is very small, of the order of 200 or perhaps 300 megabytes. There are many different ways in Slim to specify memory. One of them could be to use the dash dash mem flag, and this is the total memory for your job, or you can specify memory per CPU, etc. So how do you know how much memory your code uses? Well, the best way is really to understand what your code does, what kind of data structures it allocates, and then based on these data structures, you can actually predict very accurately how much memory the code is going to use. On the other hand, perhaps you're running a community code, a code you downloaded from an online repository, or perhaps you're using an external library, and you don't really have a very good understanding of how much memory this code is using. In that case, you can run your code and specify some amount of memory that you think should be sufficient. If the job gets killed, then you can try to ask for more and so on. So you can experiment. And then once the code runs successfully and finishes, you can actually use one of the commands shown on this slide. So as a CCT, as a count, or as F for slow efficiency, passing the job ID, and it will tell you exactly how much memory the code was using. So take that amount and then add a little bit of a cushion, maybe 15 or 20% on top of that. And that will give you a good estimate of how much memory you need to ask the next time you run this code. Also, when you're running large codes, it's really a good idea to study the scaling of the code. So run the code for a small problem, then run the code for a bigger problem, then even bigger problem, and take a look at the runtime and memory usage and have a good understanding of how these scalings work. So why the scaling is, let's say, problem size cube or problem size squared or, or, or something along those lines. And uh, that will give you some idea of how much memory your code will need for an even bigger problem. Uh, so another thing that you have to keep in mind is the discrete polling nature of Slurm. Uh, when Slurm tells you how much memory your completed job has used, it actually does not give you a very accurate number. For any running job, Slurm probes its memory usage a few times a minute. Perhaps it's every 10 seconds or something along those lines, but it's not continuous. So if your code suddenly started using a lot more memory, for example, it needs to allocate some big data structures and your uh, memory usage spiked you know, within a fraction of a second, so your job will get killed. And Slurm simply did not have enough time to record that spike in usage. So your job was killed when the spike occurred and Slurm will have no idea that this happened. It will just see that the process has died. So in this case, you don't really, you can't really use uh, these tools as SSAT and SF, and you have to rely on something else. In these cases, you can use a profiler that will give you a much more accurate estimate of memory usage. And I'm gonna uh, show you an example of Profiler in a couple of slides. Next, I want to talk about parallel jobs. So with MPI parallel jobs, uh, you have a number of Unix processes. Each process is running on its own processor, and then each process has some memory allocation. So in the codes directory, I actually have an example of a Fortran code that allocates a 100 cube uh, real, so single precision array, four bytes per element on processor zero, 200 cube array on processor one, 500 cube array on processor two, and 800 cube array on processor three. After completion, 
you can probe memory usage. And what you will see is Slurm does not record the uh, distribution of memory usage across processes. What it records only the maximum and the average uh, memory usage. If you run the SACCT command and you ask it to print the maximum resident set size, so memory usage, and also the ID of the processor where that maximum memory was used, it will print those numbers. And in this example, it will actually tell you that one of the processes used roughly two gigabytes of memory, processor zero, but then you have no idea how much memory was used on other processes. So unfortunately, Slurm just does not keep that information. And in these cases, uh, what you wanna do is use a profiler tool. Uh, there are a number of profiler tools installed on Compute Canada clusters. Perhaps the best one is the Map Profiler. It is commercial. It supports MPI parallel jobs and serial jobs as well. To use it, you have to connect to the cluster via X1140. So uh, typically you would pass uh, the flag minus Y uh, when you use SSH command to connect to the cluster. Or you can also do it, uh, you can also use this graphical map profiler inside a VNC remote desktop session. Uh, you will need to load the module, uh, DTT module, which comes with uh, the debugger and the profiler, and then use a silo command that we will study very soon to submit an interactive job and you will pass the dash dash x11 flag to Scilog to make sure that you can open graphical applications inside that interactive job and the windows from these applications will show on your laptop screen. Uh, then you compile the job and you have to compile it with the minus g debugging flag so that the compile code will also have a reference from machine code to the lines in the source code that generated that machine code. And then you run the code with map followed by the name of the executable. So that will open a GUI tool. And inside this GUI tool, uh, you can set the number of processes. And then you click the run button and you wait for it to start running. And then press stop and the analyze data. And then you will get this nice graphical interface where you will actually see the distribution of memory usage across processes.